Well, good day to everyone, and um, thank you so much for taking a little bit of your time to spend some time with us here at Manage Engine. And um, I think we have a um, very compelling topic for today. Um, for those of you that um, know me as an MVP in group policy, um, this is certainly something that is near and dear to me and something that we wanted to um, kind of bring to you just to um, stir up some of the group policy dust that may be in your environment and try to give you some insight into how you can get better control of group policy and, and better understand group policy. Um, some logistics for our webinar today. Um, this is being recorded, so you should be receiving an email in the next couple of days uh, with a link to the recording that you can review yourself or you can actually forward along to someone else if a colleague um, wasn't able to attend or if you want to share with someone, they can see the information. Um, there are a group of people in the background answering questions. So if for some reason you have a question about Active Directory, group policies, security, anything in this genre, um, as we go through the material, please um, use your GoToWebinar um, panel. There should be a place for you to ask questions and ask those questions and they'll be um, answered in line as we go through today, um, trying to optimize today. And I want to thank the people helping me with that. Um, and the final thing that I want to do is, for those of you that don't know who I am, kind of give you an idea of, of who you're listening to today. Um, my name is Derek Melber. I am currently an Enterprise Mobility MVP, which really is an Active Directory MVP. Um, I was a Group Policy MVP for about nine years, um, and with the work that I've done with Manage Engine, was ported back over to Enterprise Mobility. Um, what the MVP program really means is I have a direct tie into Microsoft, and um, that's a benefit for you because if you have any questions, concerns, comments that you want directly to go into Microsoft, I can hand deliver those. Um, actually, I can hand deliver them next week at Microsoft Ignite, which I hope some of you will be attending. Um, but if nothing else, I can send emails along. Um, with regard to Microsoft Ignite, of course, Manage Engine will be there. Um, if you will be there, I would love for you to stop by, say hello. Um, for those of you that may be on the webinar that I know, it'd be good to see you again. For those of you that I don't know, I would love to, to meet new people. Please bring your, your questions um, to the booth and we'd be more than happy to hopefully answer those. Um, we will be giving away some t-shirts and of course some Star Wars drones. So come play our VR game. That's a pretty fun thing to do and um, you can win a drone. So anyway, that's kind of my Microsoft Ignite little pitch. Um, I do want to leave you some resources um, and go over some resources. We don't have a lot of time together today, but certainly I want to um, show you some resources that you can gravitate to and you can actually take advantage of. If you go to our landing page, manageengine.com, and you hover over support, you'll see that we have some blogs. These blogs are all about Active Directory. Well, when you actually do a search on Active Directory, um, they're all about Active Directory. And this is a great way for us to communicate with you. I try to blog every single week. And what we want to do is we want to take questions that we get from people around the world, um, answer those questions, and put them into small blogs. The blog it should be no more than five minutes of your time. And as you see here, we have a variety of different things related to um, Active Directory, backup, recovery, security, a whole bunch of different things in our blog. So that's a, a great resource for you. Um, and again, the idea is that once a week, you come to the blog, you spend over them five minutes. If it's something that interests you, you can take more action. If not, it wasn't much time out of your day. So um, it's a really good resource for you. The second resource I want to point you to, in my opinion, is one of the most impressive resources out on the internet with regard to Active Directory security. If you hover over products on our main landing page, and then down here in the lower left-hand corner, you see security hardening for Active Directory. I actually just got an email this morning from Microsoft saying that they uh, had updated some of their documents with regard to threat, threats and countermeasures. What this site is all about is really how to report, analyze, configure security in Active Directory, your domain controllers, and your Windows servers. Pick a topic, and you have blogs that walk you through how to do that. We not only talk about reporting and configuring, we talk about monitoring and alerting, which in my opinion is the two most important aspects of security hardening. So please come to the site, 
you will never find all of this information in one location anywhere else on the web. It literally is about 15 years of, of me working with um, administrators, auditors, security professionals, other MVPs, um, a variety of people with regard to Active Directory, and it's a it's really a gold mine of information. Um, a, a two more resources I want to point you to. Um, those of you that um, may or may not have this group policy resource kit on your desk, I know that it says Vista. Boy, that ages this book quite a bit. But Microsoft actually has an updated group policy, um, a group policy book since this book. So this is the latest and greatest. Um, I wrote this with the um, group policy team um, many years ago, and it still is an awesome desktop reference. Um, and then finally, I want to point you to my email. Um, those of us that work on the AD Solutions team here at Manage Engine absolutely love emails because it's a way for us to um, help you. It's a way for us to learn. It's a way for us to keep a pulse on what you guys are struggling with. Um, so please email us with questions, and hopefully we can point you in the right direction to get you answers with different things. Um, for those of you that um, might be touring the world, um, whether it be in the U.S. or abroad, we, we are continuing with our 2017 World Tour. We will be um, in Orlando next week. I'll be heading down to Columbia for a quick user conference, and then after that, we'll be hitting um, LA, Boston, and Chicago here in the US, and then I jump over to Europe and spend a couple of weeks over in Europe doing some um, seminars and user conferences. So please, keep an eye out for when we'll be near you. It is a great way for you to to basically ex exchange information with us, um, talk about different things for you to see, I think, some pretty awesome presentations. It's not all about product, it's about Active Directory and solutions. So please come see us when you're in your area. Um, all right, I think that's enough of the logistics. Let's jump into the materials. Now, what I wanted to go over today are some different things that, that I find to be um, issues, concerns, or things that just kind of people do wrong or don't understand about group policy. And, and the first thing that I want you to understand is, is the, the, the myth is group policy isn't hard. Um, group policy, in my opinion, is extremely difficult. I mean, that book that I wrote took me um, well over nine months to write. Group policy is, is the cornerstone of Active Directory in terms of configuration and management, security. So. Group policy is hard. I mean, just look at a single group policy object. A single group policy object has over 1,500 settings. I mean, we're talking about settings that range from controlling the control panel, the desktop, everything. So, I mean, if you if we just crack open a group policy object here, so I'm just going to go to the default domain policy, doesn't matter which one we pick, and if we just kind of start looking around inside of group policy, and look at some of the bigger areas, right? So if I go to my local policies, I have these security options, right? All these security options. Some tips on kind of getting around, kind of decrypting these, is Microsoft has really done a pretty good job of putting explanations in here that used to not be here, but now Microsoft has shoved the explanations right into the policy settings. Not all of them, but the majority of them, right? So if you ever are wondering what, what what does complexity requirements mean? Well, actually, there's an explain tab that tells you exactly what complexity requirements mean. So this is pretty nice. But when you start talking about the abyss of security settings, that's really when we have to get to administrative templates. And if we look at all the settings in one list, you'll see this list is pretty beefy. I mean, the click, click, click. There, there's literally hundreds of settings in this list. And this is only for computer configuration. We also have underneath our um, administrative templates for um, users, we have another list, which is not the same list. It may look similar, but it is not, okay? Now, if we break down group policy into its rawest form, we have computer configurations and user configurations. The computer configurations configure, for the most part, not always, the registry that controls your computer, right? HK local machine. And if the user configuration does similar, it's going to configure HK current user in the registry. Again, not all settings from group policy configure your registry. Some of them configure environment variables, some of them configure dynamic variables some of them configure actual settings on your computer. So we it, it it's not like it used to be 
with system policy, group policy really touches a wide variety of different things. And group policy has a lot of services, a lot of moving parts. So this is where group policy can really be difficult to troubleshoot, right? From the client side, we have a group policy service and we have DHCP. And DHCP is important because primarily we get DNS information, right? And DNS information gives us the KDC, it gives us our domain controller, it gives us a lot of information. From, from the client getting DHCP information and then communicates through DNS into your domain controller. Domain controller pushes out group policy settings, but again, on your domain controller, you have a lot of th moving parts that you have to be concerned about, right? You have to worry about replication. Do things replicate correctly? And in a minute, I'm going to talk a break down group policy a little bit and talk about the replication model and the structure. So replication becomes important, the DC being available, the KDC being available, actually communicating with DNS is all essential. And then your server has to actually give out the DHCP information. So I have to give out information to the client. I can't have an APIPA address, an automatic private IP address, and actually get policy. So, so if we look at these services, we can understand a little bit of the infrastructure but also we have to look at this from a troubleshooting standpoint, right? And then we have the scope of management. Now, when, when I used to really talk a lot about group policy, the scope of management was one thing that I tried to hammer home that we want to keep group policy as simple as possible because of this complexity. Now, when it comes to the scope of management, it's the idea that, and let me show you here firsthand, when I go into group policy, and I link a GPO. So let's say, for example, I come here to my HROU and I link a group policy object. I create a link or just link. That GPO and its settings are going to be targeting the objects in the HROU. So if I come over here to my HROU in Active Directory Users and Computers, you'll see that I have users, but I don't have any computers. Now this is important because when it comes to group policy, group policy affects two types of objects, right? Computers and users. Group policy doesn't actually affect groups and scope of management concept. So you have to make sure that the target object is in the path of the GPO where you link it. Now you can also go in and disable group policy settings, right? You can disable the setting or you can disable parts of the group policy object, the user or the computer. So a lot of companies, a lot of administrators do this to try to um, do two things. One is make sure that if someone makes a setting in that area, that it actually doesn't apply because they don't want those types of objects being affected. Also, it can um, increase a little bit of performance. You're not going to see much unless you have a lot of GPOs, but you, you can't actually do that. Then we have the idea of enforced and blocked. Now, this whole idea of enforced and blocked when we talk about scope of management becomes extremely important, right? So if I come over here and let's say that I go to, um, let's go to finance. I think I have a GPO here, right? So if I go to finance and I look at group policy inheritance, so what's going to happen is all the GPOs from the domain, right? All these are from the domain. You'll see them right there are coming down and then I can block or I can enforce. So if I come over here to finance and I block inheritance, you'll see that all of the inherited GPOs go away. But I can go in here, for example, the default domain policy and I can enforce it. So if I go back to finance, you'll see that it's enforced back down. So these become ways that you can modify the application policy, which in the end result really just confuses things with this enforced and blocked. It is my preference not to enforce or not to block policy because it just becomes another way, another piece that you have to decrypt when you're troubleshooting group policy. Then you have security filtering. Now security filtering for in, in some areas became very popular and the security filtering is something that, that I typically tell people to stay away from and it's this whole idea that you can come in here and you can set up security on who's actually getting the configurations, right? Well, I, I try to stay away from this filtering because again, it really is confusing what's going on. You'll see here by default, every GPO, every single GPO applies to authenticated users, which is every user. 
you can filter that and you can reduce who is actually receiving that but I just try to stay away from that the security filtering that you have right here so you can remove this and you can add in certain groups and users I just think it's confusing so I try to tell most administrators to stay away from that then we get into item level targeting now this item level targeting is something that um, Microsoft actually acquired from a company um, in group policy preferences so if you come down here and you edit the group policy object you come to preferences and you pick any setting right so if I come in here and I create a new environment variable um, I can come over here I like I create a name for this thing and then here I have item level targeting now this targeting is some pretty awesome stuff because I can actually target based on a wide variety of different things in my environment um, and you know back when I we used to work with these quite a bit from the original company um, we used to come up with some pretty awesome ways um, which a lot of those are actually in that book um, which again makes that, that book pretty relevant but um, this item level targeting is pretty awesome and I've used it quite a bit um, to solve problems for certain um, desktop and even some server configurations and then finally you have WMI filtering which WMI filtering has its uses but of course WMI is kind of a really slow implementation so I try to stay away from these um, but these are some different ways that you can control scope of management now in terms of the structure of group policy we have a couple of things that we need to be um, definitely aware of one of them is the GPT and the GPC the GPT is the group policy template and the GPC is the group policy container now if we go back to our Active Directory environment and we pull up um, group policy here and we come under um, where our um, group policy lives right so if we come down here and we go to Windows and then we come here to Sysvol and we go to Sysvol we go to our domain name and we go to policies this is where we see our group policy objects and if we come under here you'll see that this is our GPT our group policy template now the way that I explain this is the GPT is actually your settings so if you come in here and you look at the actual settings like this GPT TMPL the GPT TMPL is um, actually a file that has some configurations in it right so these are your environment variables that you're setting right through security um, but this is only part of it so really the GPT living under your sysvol is where you have your settings then if you go back to Active Directory inside of Active Directory you have something called the GPC so if we come under our system in Active Directory users and computers and we go to policies you'll same, see the same list of GUIDs global unique identifiers and underneath these GUIDs you have the GPC a similar structure right but this isn't where your settings really live this is where I call this the glue and if you go look at the 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 um, configurations inside of this right through your attribute editor you're going to see a lot of pointers to other things related to this group policy object so I consider the GPC to be the glue and I consider the GPT to really be where the settings are now if we if we kind of go back in time and then come up in time we have a variety of different files that are used to create administrative templates we have the ADM ADMX ADML and really this separation is is right here so legacy is ADM files administrative templates and the new version is ADMX and ADML now your computers most likely are, are primarily controlled through ADMX and ADML files now to find these particular files you simply come in here you go to um, your computer right any of your computer will have this and you go to uh, let's see let's go to um, here so we go to C Windows and then policy definitions and you'll see your ADMX files are here and then under your language which the L stands for that's right language you'll have ADML files so this allows uh, Microsoft to have different languages supported through group policy the ADMX files are actually information related to where it is in the registry and the ADML files really control what it looks like on your um, desktop
Now, this whole I idea of ADMX and ADML really got convoluted and really got confusing, but what I want you to notice is one of the things that can help you with the complexity of, of administrative templates is using the central store. Now, I have this extremely complex graphic here that I got from Microsoft on the central store, but let me show you how easy this is, and this is something that I would highly recommend that you go and verify that you have set up. Now, if I go to group policy in my environment, um, let's get out of the editor for right now, and let's say that I go to my default domain policy, and I edit this, and then I come down here to my administrative templates. You will notice that at the end of this line in yellow, it says retrieve from the local machine. Now, what is happening here is Microsoft stopped putting ADM files up into the GPC, the Group Policy Container and Active Directory, because we were getting group policy bloat. We were getting so many ADM files duplicated, and it became kind of a problem for larger organizations. So they moved to ADMX and ADML, and you only use the local version unless you have a central store. So you'll notice here that no matter which one, which GPO I open, I'm opening it from that local machine because I don't have a central store created. In order to create your central store, you simply go to your policy definitions, right click and copy, okay? Now, after you have copied this, you go back to your sysvol, right? Remember the double sysvol, 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 domain name, policies, and then right here under policies, you paste it. Now what that does is when I go back to policy and I edit any GPO and I come down here to administrative templates, you'll see that I'm getting it from the central store now. Now what's the benefit there? Well, let's say, for example, that you have a variety of different operating systems in your environment, a variety of different service packs, updates. If you're just using the local copy, sometimes, depending on which computer you go to, you may not have all the settings available to you because that local computer may not have the updated ADMX and ADML files. So the idea is that whenever you get a new version of an ADMX ADML, you always just put it in the central store, and that way no matter which computer you're going to, editing group policy, your administrative templates will always be available no matter what. So this is a pretty cool um, way for you to kind of take out the complexity of um, the, the ADMX and ADML files. So that kind of walks you through um, some different things with the complexity of group policy and hopefully clean some of those things up. Um, another myth that I have is um, I, I hear people saying, oh, I can, I can apply all my settings with GP Update, um, and then I enforce it. Well, that's not always the way it happens because you have something called foreground policies and you have background policies. Now, watch what happens when I go to, um, let's see if I have here. See if I have my client running. No, that's all right. We'll just do it from here. So I'm going to go to a command prompt. Now I'm going to do a GP update. Okay. Now just a normal GP update, you'll notice that it says updating policies. It goes through and it determines the policies that should be applied. Now these are all of the updates that you have put in place since the last update. Okay, now updates occur in the background, right? Every 90 minutes you're applying updates. So, so you're, you're constantly applying updates. If there's no changes, there's no updates. Now what I find a lot of administrators do is they will use force. Now, this force is not a good thing in most situations. What force does is force actually takes all the settings and reapplies them. I don't recommend that you do this. Now, in some cases, some of you actually get another message. I'm not getting the message here because I don't have any background policies, but you may get a message saying that you might have to reboot your computer in order for all the policies to apply. This is where I'm saying the myth is I can run GP Update Force and actually have the policies apply. Not always the case. There are some settings, and I have a list here for you, software deployment, folder redirection, and scripts, um, some of the group policy preferences, drive mappings and printers don't apply in a GP update or even a force. You actually have to reboot the machine for computer policies, log off and log on for user policies in order for those settings to apply.
So this might help you when you're when you're trying to push out policy settings for you to understand when things might apply and when things may not apply. So this becomes a very important aspect of, of group policy is this background foreground. Um, for many, many years when I was a group policy MVP, we wanted to squeeze out of Microsoft a list of all these and they never did. So um, many of the MVP MVPs blogged and wrote articles on what was a background and a foreground, um, but just keep an idea of, of, of the majority of those that are background and um, what GP Update does and what it doesn't do. A third myth, myth. Once I delete a setting in a GPO, it will be removed from the target computer. Mm. That is certainly not the case. Now we're getting into something that used to be called red dot and blue dot. Now. That goes back a little bit in time, but that's what I still refer to them as. So let me walk you through something with regard to the settings and when settings tattoo and when settings don't tattoo. Now, this whole idea of tattooing was a huge issue in Windows NT. And then when Microsoft released Windows 2000 and beyond, they actually touted that policy didn't tattoo, which was a complete incorrect statement. Now, I'm going to go into a policy. I'm going to show you some different things. So first of all, I'm going to come down here under my administrative templates. And I'm going to set a filter. And I'm going to look at this idea of managed or unmanaged. A tattooing policy is unmanaged. So we're going to set this to no. And we're going to set the filter. Now, you will see that there is one tattooing policy this is a, a Microsoft setting, right, which is kind of weird because they actually put this in here, which you will tattoo, meaning that if I just delete this GPO from having it being configured, enabled or disabled, it will not remove this setting out of the registry for that target computer, even though the policy no longer applies to it because it doesn't clean up that area, okay? Now, this whole idea of red dot, blue dot, it used to be a red dot and blue dot. Now, if you look at this little icon right here, I know it's kind of hard to see, right? See this little icon? See that down arrow? That down arrow means that it is a tattooing policy. If I go in and I remove the filter, you will see that all of the other settings do not have that down arrow. So these settings are non-tattooing, meaning that if I apply the setting, right, I come in here and enable it, and then I delete the GPO, that entry from the registry will actually be removed. It won't tattoo the machine. Now, if we go one step further and talk about ADM templates. Now, ADM templates can still be used even though we have ADMX and ADML. Actually, it, they're used quite a bit for a lot of organizations. To get an ADM template in your environment, you go to Add or Remove Templates inside of a GPO, and you can add it in. You'll notice that right here, okay? Now, I have one, and let's see, it's right here, Custom ADM. You'll notice when I edit this, and I go down to my Administrative Templates, and I Add Remove, you'll see that I have one in here, okay? Now, ADM templates are not placed in the central store, and they are per GPO. So the other GPOs won't see this ADM template. That's why when I looked at the default domain policy, it didn't see the administrative template that's here. Now, if I come down here, which this is an actual user setting, you'll notice that I'm getting information from the central store, the ADMX and ADML. I have this hidden files, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the filter on, and you will see that I have classic administrative templates, right? And this is where that setting would be, similar to what I showed you up here. So now you have a methodology for you to see the settings, okay? Now, you'll notice the down arrow here, and you'll also notice that message, right? Filter on. Filtering does not support ADM templates. So now it just got a little more complicated. Going back to my first bullet point, this stuff can get pretty complicated, okay? But you'll notice here that if without the filtering, 
that I see my setting here. Um, this is actually a pretty good one. I like this one. This is my favorite one. This actually um, allows you to, um, through policy, um, have every computer in your environment show both hidden and super hidden files, which is kind of a cool thing that you can do from policy. Anyway, so that talks a little bit about the legacy ADM templates, blue dot, red dot, or down arrow, tattooing, not tattooing settings and policy. Now, one of the things that I absolutely want to cover Okay, we were talking about ADM templates, right? If you come here under your window settings, security settings, local policy, security options, all of these settings tattoo, every single one of them, okay? These do not adhere to the Microsoft way of doing things. These here actually will tattoo. These are from Microsoft and they tattoo. So administrative templates, right, don't tattoo from Microsoft except for a couple. ADMs most likely tattoo. Security options absolutely tattoo. So this is where you get into those myths about what applies and what doesn't apply. And I've tried to give you some ideas here on the settings. Now, what affects tattooing? Well, there are four registry locations which are indicated by the word policies. So if I go back to um, my group policy settings here, let's go over here. Let's crack open a, um, let's, let's go, let's see, let's go all the way back. Let's go to Windows, Policy Definitions, and let's just crack open one of these things. You'll notice here that this says Policies. Policies is actually in the past in the registry, okay? So if I have policies, so you'll see here, this is um, the key in the registry, software policies, Microsoft Windows. If I didn't have this policies pass, then it would tattoo. And there are two for computer and there are two for user, thus four registry locations. All right, let's move on to the next myth. I back up my GPOs, so I'm good there. <laughs> Let me walk you through where you're not good, okay? Now, let's look at backup. If I use the GPMC, I can back up individual GPOs or all the GPOs. Let me show you how to do that, because I want you to do this. If you haven't done this, please go do that, this when we're done with this webinar. So if I come here into my group policy objects, I can back up all. That'll back up all of your GPOs. If I go to individual GPOs, I can back up that GPO. Everything that you see here is manual, okay? Now, if I go and I manage my backups, you'll see that I have these backups. I can do some different things with them and they're right here, okay? I'm not saying the backup is not worth anything. I'm saying it's, it's not the end all, okay? PowerShell, you'll see here, you have to get a special PowerShell version to actually be able to do this, right? The AD module won't do this for you unless they've added it in recently. So you need to be able to go back these up, but you can script this, right? So you can back up individual GPOs or all GPOs. All This one can be automated. This one is automated, right? But what I want you to consider is the fact that you can only recover back to the backup where if you use a tool that's designed to deal with these things better, like Recovery Manager Plus, you can actually pretty much get to a backup in real time. Now what I wanna do is I wanna talk about this in the restore, and then I wanna show you, okay? With restoring, I can restore an individual GPO, or I can restore all GPOs. With PowerShell, I can restore an individual GPO or all GPOs. I cannot restore individual settings with Microsoft tools. Let me say that again. I cannot restore individual settings with Microsoft tools. I also cannot restore to a point in time with Microsoft tools. Now you may be thinking, well, why does that matter? Well, let me show you. If I come into group policy, right? And let's say that my backups occur at five in the morning. Perfect. So let's say that, that it's eight o'clock, I get to work, I have an email, and I have to go into a GPO 
and I have to make a setting. So I go into a GPO. Let's say that I, I'm just going to pick something here, right? I'm, I'm just going to pick something that's easy. Let's say that I go into my account lockout policy and I want to set my threshold to five. Excellent. It sets the other two settings. Great. All right. That's what I wanted. I know that backup is going to occur tomorrow morning at five, so I don't perform a backup because it's just going to back up automatically. But now it's 11 o'clock in the morning and someone else goes into this policy and they make a different setting, right? So they may come under a totally different area and they set an audit policy, right? So now I have a setting at eight in the morning and I have a setting at 11 in the morning, but uh-oh, the setting at 11 in the morning breaks stuff. At noon, I can go back and I can restore, right, from backup, that GPO to five in the morning. But what I'm going to miss are the settings that I made at eight in the morning. Because I'm only doing one backup a day, and I don't want to backup every hour, so this becomes a huge issue. But if you have a tool that's actually designed to handle these types of things, like Recovery Manager, now you can actually go back in time and look at not only the setting that you want, but historical settings. So watch this. So I'm pulling up Recovery Manager here, and Recovery Manager has been running. Because I made some changes, I'm going to go do a backup right now. This is what you really can't do with Microsoft because it's all or nothing. It's not going to help you to do a backup when the setting that's in there is no good. But what I'm able to do is I'm able to come in here to the restore option. And there is my custom AD. And I can look at granular restorations. And now I can see what is actually being modified, right? So this is custom ADM, right? I go into that and look here, I have versions. So I can actually go back in time to modify things and choose an historical value. For example, I had a other GPO that has even more changes. So you'll notice here, I can go back in time. I have the backup value and the current value. I can go back in time and I can say, I want to move that to 14. The other thing that I can do is I can do a rollback. Now what a rollback allows me to do is it allows me to pick a point in time, right? So here's where I can go in and I can say, I want to go back to um, September 3rd. Okay, and the only thing that I want to look at is group policy. So what I can do is I can go in and say, all right, I want to identify changes of all group policy settings all the way back to September 3rd. This, this is going to tell me what will be restored if I do this. If I don't want one of those, I simply deselect it. So now I have a custom way that I can go back to a point in time to the detail setting level to do a restoration. Microsoft can't do this. So it's a myth to think that Microsoft is really going to help you with this because it is so complex. Ah, okay. Now there's a question that came up with AGPM. So, um, so virtually everything that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about are the native tools, right? AGPM is only available if you have XYZ. It used to only be MDOP, right? Um, the desktop optimization pack. Um, but the, the advanced group policy management tool, AGPM, actually has some of these capabilities, but it certainly doesn't allow the level of granularity that you have here, okay? So it, it, it does some overlap, but it's I, I, actually desktop standard is the one that created that tool. And the tool really wasn't updated much over time. And I can't remember the last time AGPM was actually updated. But it, it is something, and, and it certainly I suggest um, that you take a look at it and see if it, it's going to give you the same features. I can tell you, because I've worked with AGPM and I've worked with um, Recovery Manager, 
Recovery Manager has a much better interface. It has much better um, controls in terms of getting back to time with this restoration and the ability for me to look at the granular restore. I have a lot better view on what's going on in the history of the changes and I'm at the change level. So it's a little bit different environment with um, Recovery Manager than with um, with um, HEPM. Um, another question that came through is, does this work with Azure AD? No, it does not. Um, but Azure AD is, is a totally different platform in terms of, of policy and how policies are applied. Um, and, and, and right now, we are not working with that. As far as I know, Microsoft um, it doesn't have a very seasoned tool for working with Azure AD and their policies is, is either. Okay, good questions. All right, let's move on and talk about our um, last one. I don't need to be notified of GPO changes. Well, this is one area where I really want to encourage you all to, to really take a step back and look at things that could go on in your environment. Um, change monitoring and alerting, in my opinion, is the most important part of ensuring stability of Active Directory. Now, there are ways that you can look at group policy in terms of, of um, changes that are occurring, right? Um, Microsoft has added in um, some capabilities for you to go to the event viewer and through the event viewer, you can look at a variety of different things. So if I come in here to event viewer, some of my settings are going to be shown in the security log. Um, these, this is where if I modify a group policy object, it'll show up here. Um, I also have some applications. Um, you'll see GDP update is here. A CE CLI is another one here, which can help you with that. You also here under your applications and services log under Microsoft Windows, you have a um, group policy um, operational log. So this is some awesome information here. Um, this is one of those areas in the book. When I wrote it, I thought it was going to be about 10 pages and it's over 30 pages because of the really awesome stuff that's in here. The problem with you trying to utilize Event Viewer for monitoring and alerting is there's no report option. There, there's no way for you to generate reports, right? I, I don't have reporting, so I have to filter out all this stuff. I have custom views, but it, it really isn't going to get me to that level. If, if I want to be notified of changes that are occurring, I need a change monitoring an alerting system. So, for example, when I made modifications to that policy, I have AD Audit Plus, which is monitoring those changes. And you'll notice here that when finance was modified, I got a notification. Look at all my notifications here when I was messing with group policy. I then can go into my reports and I can look both at the group policy level recently modified GPOs, and I see those here. I can also go down to my advanced GPO settings, and I can look at certain configurations here. So this right here is my security settings. You'll see that, that I have the details in here on what was changed. So I had no old value when I set it to success. Remember, it wasn't set, and then I set it to success. So through here, I'm able to get reporting, Here's my alerting, and then of course, now I have the ability to recover if I need to re recover. So my opinion for all of you administrators out there is you need a tool like AD Audit Plus, which can give you alerts on virtually everything. I'm not just talking about group policy. I'm talking about if um, an OUACL changes, if GPO permissions change, if someone modifies the administrator account, if an administrative group changes, all of these things are things that you should be receiving emails on, right? All of my alerts allow me to not only throw up something in the dashboard, but all of these allow me to also send email notifications. And I'm getting down to the granular level. I'm not getting generic, hey, something changed alerts. I'm getting quality detail information about that particular area. And AD Audit Plus is a no-brainer with regard to this. 
because it gives me the capability of not only seeing group policy, but everything. Changes, log on failures, you name it. Anything that goes through that security log, I'm digging it out and I'm giving you a report and all these are, are pre-built reports. Nothing here that I've shown you is actually a custom report. These are things that come out of the box with that tool. So you need a tool like AD Audit Plus to give you control over all the areas of group policy. Microsoft doesn't give you this. It, it, I mean, of course, you can get you know um, SCCM and SCOM and, and, and all of those big robust tools, and absolutely, right? You could probably code it in PowerShell after about you know a month, but what I'm saying is to get something that is out of the box awesome, easy to use, download, install, configure, and getting alerts, 20 minutes. So that's how powerful a tool like AD Audit Plus is. And of course, Recovery Manager, it's just as easy as a install because all I'm doing is I'm looking at the changes that are occurring once a day, twice a day, I'm backing them up. And I can always do a backup now and be able to look at the history of those settings and do that restoration. So we went through a lot with group policy today and I know you guys probably have some more questions. I, I know that my team has been answering questions along the way as well as I've tried to answer some of your questions. If anything that I said stirred up something and you want to go test and then send me an email, please do that. Um, you know, my email, Derek at manageengine.com. I, I love to hear questions. I love to help administrators try to solve problems. Um, so, you know, please use me as a resource. Use me as a resource in terms of, um, you know, if you can't figure it out or if you just want to know if I know the answers, you don't have to figure it out, shoot me an email. We went through a lot with group policy. Some of it was review for some of you, which is great. Some of it was new information. And some of it you're probably wondering, well, I don't think it works that way. Go test it. Please go test it. I, I've done a lot of this testing. I, I Again, I, I've been a GPO, a group policy MVP for many, many years. And um, it's really a passion of mine um, to help administrators with group policy. So that kind of sends us to the end of, of our webinar. Let's see, I had a... Um, so there was a question that came um, up about, um, is there a recording of this? Yes, we actually recorded this and you will be receiving an email in the next couple of days with a link to the recording. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I wanna thank all of you for your time today. I really hope this was one enlightening and was a good use of your time. Um, we do have some more webinars coming up over the next couple of months, so keep an eye out for those. For those of you in the US, LA, Boston, Chicago, even going down to Orlando at Ignite, please come see me. Those of you that live internationally, please come see me if you're gonna be in one of the cities I'll be at. Um, I definitely look forward to meeting all of you. Um, I do have another question that popped up here. Um, and um, I, I just want to thank you guys for your time. I want to thank my team members for helping me with the questions. And until next time, I'm going to let you guys get back to work and get on with your day. And until next time, this is Derek Melber and the rest of the AD Solutions team. Thank you so much and have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm.